I had seen these guys like Ruslan and Alan Parr and Pastor Eric Mason. And I was like, what, how are these guys like losing this weight? And then I, one of them had an interview with you and um, you were talking about empty your bucket. So I looked it up and I'm watching it from afar. I'm like, OK. So I'm like, you know, look and read. I go to reviews. I do a deep, uh, deep dig yeah. and I'm just watching because I'm like, man, Ruslan, he already kind of had it already. He doesn't have, <laughs> he's not 303 pounds. Right. Like, uh, you know, Pastor Alan Parr, he wasn't 303 pounds. I'm like, these guys probably were already in their bag already. So I don't know what this guy JT is like really about. Like, let me see something real. Well, something that not real, but something that resonated with me. Me, you know, and hearing, you know, Dr. Eric Mason's story and, and really started to hear your heart and the heart of empty your bucket. And when I saw, when I saw. Brother, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. It's been 90 days. It's been an amazing, amazing journey. And uh, I'm just excited because, you know, I know there's people on the other side that are struggling with weight that have been yo-yo dieters all their lives that think that that's their destiny, right? They, they either mm-hmm. think they're big boned or. They think they're from the Midwest and uh, it's just not in their, <laughs> it's just not in their deck of cards to actually, right. uh, wait. but your story has been very, very different. And that's why um, I wanted to interview you. Um, talk to us a little bit about the process. Like what were, what were you weighing when you first came on the program and what are you weighing now? So as a, as a big bone kid from the Midwest, which I actually am, <laughs> I started, that's funny because I'm from the Midwest and my grandmother say, oh, you just big ball. That's, that's, that's hilarious. But uh, yeah. man, I started at 303 pounds, 303.6 pounds. I always add the little ounces on there. I'm like, I want them yeah. to know. But yeah, 303.6 pounds, man, that's where I started. J- wow. July 17th. Yeah. And as of today, you are? 274.2. Yep. October 17th. Man, man. Yeah. 29 pounds in 90 yeah. days. That's crazy. Um. You know, it's funny, Q, because when people think about dieting, all they can think about is the first three letters of the word diet. They feel like they're going to die. <laughs> and everyone's like, man, I just don't want to restrict myself. I don't want to be hungry. I mean, were you hungry throughout the 90 days? No, man. I think the first, you know, those eight days are tough to get through because you, you're you getting adjusted to the adjustments, right? Because it's the reset. You're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to fall into the reset. And so it's tough to just hit the reset button and think you're just going to reset and it was, and it's going to be like easy. But once you kind of get the way your brain, re- it's a reset of the brain too, and not just your palate. Right. But it's a reset also of the brain. And so it was just kind of like, okay, I got to flow. I'm prepared. I'm accountable. I have to report these things. So, uh, you know, and it, it, I'm in a system. I had our own system, but because before it was just a free for all. Right. And so yeah. now it was like, when you get caught in that system, it's like, well, this is what it's for. We're we're meant to live in systems, right? So that was that made it after like I would say the tenth day. It was like, man, I started to really think like, man, I could do this, and that didn't mean I didn't have any mishaps, right? But it was like I was in a system that I could fall back on. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, you know um, what you said is so interesting, and it's and it's something that I believe is is sort of um, it's the unpreached sermon, and it's the idea mm-hmm. that you know, most people when they approach weight loss. They just think that they're, you know, they're just got, they just got to meet up a specific metric on the scale. Right. But what you, what you're saying here is that those first eight to 10 days, when you experience hunger, you were detaching from your addiction to food, right? Yeah. Because when we get, we get used to constantly spiking insulin, it becomes a dependency, right? Because yeah. anytime we spike that insulin with the food we like, we're secreting dopamine. Anything that secretes dopamine makes us heavily, heavily addicted. Yeah. So this process is not just the process of losing weight, but actually detaching from those dependencies. And interestingly enough, that's about how long it takes for anyone that's addicted to any substance to come into homeostasis, which is that balance. It's Mm. like eight to 12 days. And that doesn't mean that you don't crave certain things the rest of the time, but, but those, those cravings really, really diminish. Is is that, is that a fact? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, man. I think, when I think about all the things that I love, but but in a way where I felt like I need it, like I got it, like, you know, I need it. Learning, one of the biggest hacks I learned was like, you know, as far as cravings, it's like, you're not even hungry, you're thirsty. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like that and learning that from you was like, man, it's, if I if I drank water and I drank what I was supposed to drink and I started off at like half gallons, it was like, man, it's tough getting through it. But it was like, man, I, I look up and it's like, you know, three o'clock and it's like, man, I'm not hungry. I'm not rushing to like, go get something or, and yeah, man. So, so that was, that was something that was definitely uh, instrumental 
to the process, man. So crazy. So crazy. So, you know, uh, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, you, you hear the saying all the time, clarity is power. Clarity is power. And I always yeah. like reframe that, that, that quote to clarity is potential power because yeah. what clarity, clarity says is clarity actually opens up your eyes um, to things you weren't seeing before. And as you see yeah. those things, you, you, you can or cannot make a decision. Like you're either yeah. going to make a decision to go in the right direction or you're not. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, what I hear you saying is that your eyes were open to your hunger cues. You started to identify thirst versus yeah. hunger, emotional hunger versus physical hunger. Yeah. And then, and then once you have that, you, you have to make a decision with it. Right. Yeah. Which, right. Which is, which is great when you have accountability because that accountability reinforces that, that follow through of like, Hey, yeah. here's, here's, yeah. here's the issue too. What do you want to do about it? Right. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, man, what, what an amazing, amazing process. And, um, what would you say? Cause I know you had tried other things like low carb diets. I think you, you did keto. Why would you say the empty your bucket nutrition plan is different? I would say it was different because when the thing, the things that I tried before, um, eventually, like even in some type of some fasting plans that weren't necessarily spiritual, uh, I talk, uh, was with, um, one of my friends he was telling me about uh he's a marine and he does this uh hard 75 thing and yeah. it's like you heard of that before i had never heard of that but but yeah. yeah like so hard 75 and things of that nature and one of my questions was how sustainable is it uh mm -hmm. and i was sizing it up against you know the empty your bucket plan like is this something that i can take with me throughout the week when i'm having a good day when i'm having a bad day like am i gonna fall off and like never come back like you know what i mean and so like um empty your bucket is lifestyle it's it's more so lifestyle and not like oh i'm doing it for a season there's one thing i mentioned to you uh that really talked about that sustainability is like man i don't want a summer body man i want a four seasons body even <laughs> it's not about vanity but it's you see what i'm saying i'm like i want something that i can sustain for for life you know what i mean yeah that's, that's amazing you know it's funny because you know timelines are such a double-edged sword right like yeah. we need to you need to know like, hey, when am I starting? Hey, when am I ending? Yeah, the for problem, sure. The problem with timelines is that it doesn't it, it doesn't say much about sustainability, right? Because it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. what happens after six weeks? What happens exactly. after exactly? What happens after seventy five hard? Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Does it mean a, a, a lifestyle a lifestyle of hard? Like, yeah. like how, yeah. how does that all work? Right? Yeah. It's also interesting when you said four seasons body because you know when you start to think about like all the subliminal messages that come across to us through marketing. Like when you think yeah. of that Four Seasons Hotel, yeah. what they're trying to state there is like, hey, you can stay at this hotel all year round. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's giving yeah. me some ideas there to, to create. Yeah. The, four, the Four Seasons Diet. <laughs> hello, hello. That's it, man. That's it. This is it. Yeah, That's cool. This is it. So, well, brother, you know, um, as you mentioned earlier, like when you first came on board, when you started hearing my stuff, you were skeptical, right? And um, I guess my, my first question to you, because when you answer this question, you're answering this question for a lot of people that are mm -hmm. watching this that are on the other side and they're skeptical too. They're like, who is this dude? Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and, and so like, what was it that made you skeptical and, and what made you a believer? So, you know, what what made me skeptical in the beginning is because everybody has a plan, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has a program. Everybody that you see it in the ads when you're looking at other stuff, like, it's like, you know, do you want a low carb diet? You know, those guys, man, they got their <laughs> shirt off, they're working yeah, yeah, out, they sweat it. They got the girls with it's like, do you want to <laughs> lose weight? Are you a man with man boobs and you want to lose weight? Here's what you get. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, those guys in the ads and it's like, OK, well, what's so great about this guy? The funny thing about you is, is that you I never saw you before I heard about the program. Mm -hmm. I never knew who you were. And then um, I had seen these guys like Ruslan and Alan Parr and Pastor Eric Mason. And I was like, what, how are these guys like losing this weight? And then I, one of them had an interview with you and um, you were talking about empty your bucket. So I looked it up and I'm watching it from afar. I'm like, OK, so I'm like, you know, look and read. I go to reviews. I do a deep, a deep dig yeah. and I'm just watching. I watched you. I have been watching you since May. Like before I or no, uh, uh, yeah, like like maybe about eight weeks before I like actually contacted you, and mm -hmm. so just like videos and just listening to what you were saying, it was just like, okay, I hear you, but when I started to hear 
the believing part came into fruition when first I seen like I, I think the biggest one I, I would say is like hearing um uh uh Dr. Eric Mason's uh uh interview, right? And I because I'm like, man, Ruslan, he already kind of had it already. He doesn't have <laughs> he's not 303 pounds, right? Like uh, you know, Pastor Alan Parr, he wasn't 303 pounds. I'm like, these guys probably were already in their bag already. So I don't know what this guy JT is like really about. Like, let me see something real. And when I saw <laughs> when I saw well something that not real, but something that resonated with me, you know, and hearing, you know, Dr. Eric Mason's story. And and really started to hear your heart and the heart of empty your bucket and you know behind that and really being a believer really played in a role in believing right and it was just like man so this that really set it apart it wasn't carnal it wasn't worldly at the root of it you know it was you know it's, it's faith based too as well and it's more so about addiction like it's like really addressing that because that was one of the hardest things to really face like yo I'm really addicted to food even being in the middle of the program and I'm in, sitting in some drive through. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what do you, you know what I mean? Like, for real, I'm just keeping it real. I'm at KFC. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get an eight piece nugget. And it's like, bro, like, you know what I mean? So that, those things like really made me, um, those foundations and those pillars made me a believer for real in the program. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. So as a, as a clinical counselor, you know, and, and focusing on eating disorders and substance abuse in a different realm, like I've heard people addicted to drugs that that you know that at some point in time when i was doing my training I, I i interacted with and you know they said something similar it was like hey i was going through counseling i was sober for a couple of weeks and then next thing you know i i just i i i opened my eyes and i was at the crack house mm. and like right before i was about to to um to take a hit mm. i thought and like i know better like i just committed yeah. to this thing like mm. i have I have the support. Like, what am I doing here? And what that person said to me was that they had that that gave them like this this anger, like almost like this righteous anger to be better and to clean up their lives. And and yeah. it was at that moment where he said to me, he said, "Man, it took everything in me to get up from that dirty floor where I was mm. about to hit, leave the drugs that I had just bought, and then get up and walk out that door and know that I that I was never looking back because I knew." that what I was about to do was so hard, mm -hmm. but it was going to be worth any kind of dopamine hit that I would ever do. Mm. And, and then, you know, seeing that person come back and say, and in retrospect, he says, I want my family back. He says, I have a relationship with God. And now mm. I'm able to go back into that pit to pull people out. He said, and it was that decision that I made that day that radically changed my life. And, and has allowed me to impact my circle of influence like never before. Mm. So I say this because even though they're two different things, very different, oftentimes seen as, well, drugs are worse than food. But the truth is that if you go down that route, the, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same end goal, for for them, which is for to kill, destroy your dreams, yeah. you know, the people you can impact your legacy and, mm. um, and ultimately to show up like you're meant to show up, which is which is like a light in the midst of darkness. My tra I've been a, a, a JT Tapia's parrot uh, like all <laughs> over, man. And I just saying like, you know what my coach says, you know, food is like a Christian <laughs> crack. And they're like, man, that's, you know, that's powerful. But for real, like just being in like in small groups and things with men and being and serving in um, in ministry at my church, man, the people notice those things. Right. And they talk about, you know, how they want to know how you're doing it. And because they see like. You know, you had a barbecue with uh, salmon and salad and it's like, what's, what, you, what you got going on? And it's like, man, hey, you know, and I tell them about it. And I'm like, this I, I, I refer to you as my Colombian connect first, man. I'm like, it's <laughs> the guy who's the who is, I'm like, you got to holler at my plug. You want in on this? You got to yeah. holler at my plug. But, you know, I tell them about that, man, and just what it's about and like really setting the foundations of stewardship. And whether they see me with a, a piece of chicken again after that, like, you know, it's just like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm still in it. I'm still in it. But, you know, them just seeing those results because people, time goes by and they look up and they're like, wow, you really stuck with it. So it's like, man, just inspiring other people to really get up. Like, man, you know what they say when you're into it, it's like, man, I got to get myself together. You know, like I got to get it together and just really t tell them the heart of it, that it's about stewardship. It's like, you know, if, if our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, I'm like, man, that's something to really sit with. It's, it, it sounds cute, but it also it's like, you know, um, it sounds cute in a way where we're like, yeah, you know, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. But it's like also, are you giving him a, a, a trap house 
or are you mm-hmm. giving him a mansion? You are you giving him an abandoned house, or is it you know what I mean? And so I was like, man, I've been I've been treating that house, you know. So like that that was something that's really you know um, something for that for me to think about, you know, during this plan, man. Was yeah, that's so good, bro. I, I, yeah. I talk about that all the time. Like when I go to church, you know, sometimes we show up early because <clears throat> we want to get good seats and. And I see some people that come in and they'll see a little garbage on the floor and they'll pick it up and they don't even work there, but you know, they just have mm. this commitment to the church and to yeah, the church. yeah. Throwing, you know, they're throwing the things in the garbage and picking things up and ordering the house. But then I go, I wonder if they're true, the true temple, the true church, the yeah. temple. Yeah, yeah. Same with their temple. I'm I'm wondering if 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 they have that level of commitment to their temple as much as they do yeah. to that building. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm, and, mm. you know, the question is always, would you go to your church and throw trash on the floor? And people would say, like, mm. I would never do that. Like, why yeah, would I ever do that? Like, yeah. so why are you trashing your own temple? Wow. Wow. You know? Wow. And, um, you know, the Bible says that we don't serve uh, man-made temples anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But now, if, if, if you are, if you have believe with your heart and profess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and Savior, then he has come to live inside of you. Mm. And you are a temple. Do you view it that way, yeah. right? Mm. Do, you, do you live as a holy, uh, living sacrifice to, to yeah. the Lord, as Romans mm. chapter 12 says? And uh, man, when you start to look at it from that perspective, it just takes on a whole different, um, a whole different meaning. And I think mm. that that's what most of us are are seeking is is that 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 why, right? Like, yeah. Not yeah. What many what's out there? Yeah. Right? Keto, Atkins, South Carolina, County. You know, that's the what. Yeah. That's the why, right? Like, right? Well, who, why does Q get up every day and do what he does? Why, like, why do you do what you do? Yeah. Right. And so, man, and what's important to Q? Like, what does Q? What does Q want people to say? You know, the day he he goes on to be with the Lord and mm-hmm. it's that memorial service, and and, and yeah. your best friend gets up and and talks about your life, and you know, and your family and your kids get up and talk about your life. Like, what what yeah. what are those? What do we want mm. that? To yeah, I think that when we live with those things in mind, we're very intentional about our choices. Yeah, yeah, it makes a radical, radical difference. So, yeah. brother, once again, thank you for the time. Thank you yeah. for uh, this conversation. It's been edifying to me. Um, yeah. You know, this entire process with you, but but um, you know, really coming to to the table here and, and chatting about it is just is it's it's beautiful. It's like yeah. it's like the first graduation. So we got to keep on. Like yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You, you you just got your bachelor's, so now we got to go yeah. on to uh, to get a, a bachelor's, you know, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, yeah. man. Coach, I appreciate you so much, man. This has been, man, a crazy ninety days mentally, physically, um, and but also, man, just so rewarding, um, and and so definitely edifying, man. And I think that um, when I think about you know how I started. And my mindset of of now, it's like, man, it is it, it's a it's it's still it, it's still a work in progress. I haven't obviously yeah. arrived, but you know, but definitely, man, it's been it's been definitely rewarding. I think, man, uh, one thing I noticed the other day when I found your shirt, the shirt that you not found it, but when you get uh the one that comes in the box, yeah. you're slick, man. You are slick, <laughs> man. You are slick. You sent me a large shirt. Uh, and I said, man, this who does this dude think I am? <laughs> and I and because I, I wear a two X, but I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you something, man. I, I, I'm almost, I'm almost. It, it looks, it looks a lot different than what it did before. I'll tell you that. We're yeah. putting it on, so I was like, ah, I know I, this guy, man. I was, this guy's a guru, man. He knows what he's doing, man. <laughs> oh, let's go. I tell I hear all the time. Reach out to me, and they're like, hey, JT, I think you made a mistake. You sent me a large. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, you know what? I just respond with you. Don't yep. respond. Yeah. <laughs> he never responded to that, man. He never responded. That is good. That's 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 rich, man. That's just good, man. I love it.